Hey everybody, what is up, Jump here, and welcome back to our video, and thank you, first off, for 716 subscribers. Today we're going to be covering item attributes, um, or NBT tags, I don't know where I wrote metadata, NBT tags would be the more accurate thing to say, um, but thank you, this is episode 13, thank you for 716 subscribers, again, as I said, I'm a bit of a mess today, so if I sound like I can't words, that's because I'm not wording well today. Um, this is my second try at recording this after recording for 7 minutes and realizing it was an awful idea to record it. Um, so, anyways... You'll notice here if I go ahead and show you the commands covered, we have covered all of these different commands. This is episode 13, of course. And first off, so what are item attributes? Now, item attributes are little bits of information that allow you to go ahead and customize items. So if we go ahead and use this command here, for example, it allows you to enchant stone, for example. That's not typically possible, even with the slash enchant command. Um, and it's using this command here that I'm able to do that. So I'm going to be covering a couple of item tags. Um, and once you get the hang of these item tags, you can actually go ahead and use all of them pretty easily. And um, I go ahead and actually show you, or I'll have a link in the description to the Minecraft Gamepedia page about all of these MBT tags, um, because there are a lot of these MBT tags. So in this fix off, um, I'm giving myself stone, one zero. One zero means I'm going to go ahead and give myself one of them. Zero means no extra data. Um, and then we have this curly bracket thing. So what we do is first off, actually I'm going to go ahead and uh, build a command from scratch here. I'm going to go give regimp games um, say um, potato um, one zero. Um, and I'm going to go here and first off I'm going to do two curly brackets. And inside these curly brackets I'm going to type enchantment or inch in this case. You don't type fully enchantment. And then you're going to go ahead and after you do inch you're going to add two square brackets. Then inside that you're going to add two curly brackets. Um, and inside those two curly brackets is when you go ahead and you specify in your enchantment. Now each enchantment has an item ID or has an ID number. I'm not going to go ahead and go over what they are because I don't know all of them. Um, but we say for example, choose a random unless you have 15. What we're going to do then also level, which you do L the LVL colon and then your level number. So I'm going to do level 100, which will probably be a bit insane. So now it's going to have an, a potato with um, enchantment 15 level 100, um, which apparently happens to not exist um let's try level or number one level 100 there we go now you just see a fire protection 100 i don't know what enchantment was actually put on this one um but there you go you could actually add multiple enchantments too so you could also add a comma after that second set of curly brackets and do id colon say um two uh level is 150. Um, and there might be a max um, level, so just FYI. But yeah, you notice now I have Fire Protection 10, 100 and uh, Feather Falling 150. Um, and now comes the Display Tag. And the Display Tag is one you'll see very, very often because it's one of the most useful ones. So first off, we're going to go ahead and add um, a comma after the enchantment thing. And we're going to add um, a thing that says Display. Now after this thing that says Display, we're going to add a colon. Um, since we took similarly to what we do with enchantment, but this time instead of starting with double square brackets, we're going to do double curly brackets. And we're going to go first off, we're going to set a name. Now, these inside the display tag, we have multiple of these different tags. You don't have to do them in a specific order, and you don't have to go ahead and use all of them. You only have to use one of them, or you can use none of them. Um, but of course, if you're adding the display thing, you should have something in it. So I'm going to go ahead and first off have a name of potato for the item um, in all lowercase because, you know, we have to do that. Um, and we're going to add some lore. Now, lore is this purple tech you sometimes will see beneath items and say maps. So, for example, I'm going to do the mystical item. Um, and you notice I'm doing this all in square brackets and comma, uh, and then by, um, by a person. Okay, and by the way, if you're curious as to why you use square brackets here, there's this thing called an array. Um, and an array is essentially a thing that includes multiple different sets of items inside of it. Um, you may uh, know what an array is if you're familiar with programming. Um, but anyways, I think I do need to go ahead and also add another curly bracket at the end here uh, to balance it out. Um, and no, I did mess it up. Um, did hug parsing failed, blah, blah, blah. Um, maybe I added an extra one here or something. Let's see. That could be very well it. Yep, I did add an extra one. And you'll notice... There we go, it's now named potato in all lowercase. It has these two enchantments and it says the mystical item by a person. Um, and say I wanted to go ahead here. Oh no, there goes the potato. All right, um, I don't think I have the that item anymore. 
anyway, say I wanted to go ahead here and um, add create an unbreakable item. So I'm gonna go ahead here and do give wage jump games um, or golden underscore pickaxe um, one zero because we're, again we're just keeping the default information. Um, then we're gonna add the unbreakable tag. The unbreakable tag allows you to go ahead and enable something being unbreakable. So if I go ahead and enable unbreakable colon one, you'll notice now we have an unbreakable golden pickaxe. Now the reason I chose a golden pickaxe specifically is you may know that golden pickaxe, pickaxes are extremely good, but they have extremely low durability. So if I were to go ahead and say line up a row here, um, you'll notice no matter what I do, this will never break. You'll notice it's losing no durability whatsoever, and that is amazing because, you know, you don't want breakable items always, um, and this is especially good for maps. All right. So there is that, that is fairly useful. You can also do these things called attribute modifiers. Now I should mention also, there is an easier way to apply these item tags which I have gone over in previous videos and I may link down to in the description, but it's using online tools. Um, it's just good to know how these all work um, in case you wanna do something manually and not have to go to a website and wait for it to load. Um, you could also go ahead and do something called hide flags and this will go ahead and hide certain, uh, certain bits of data. So for example, uh, I'm going to enable something called the can destroy tag on this. I'm going to do comma um, can destroy colon. And I'm going to make it so that it could only destroy Minecraft colon stone. Um, and so this can only destroy stone. So you notice here um, on it, it says can break stone. So if I go ahead and give myself a stone here, um, and set myself to adventure mode, and first I have to place this down. Um, you know, so it'll go ahead and let me break it, but it won't let me break any of these other things here. You notice it just doesn't let me. It doesn't let me no matter what I do. Um, and that also brings me to the can place tag, very similar to the can break tag, which will make it so that you can place the item on certain things. Again, these are only applicable in adventure mode. But say, for example, I want to go ahead and make it so that you can place it. Um, if I can find it, I could just, uh, let's see, I don't see it. Um, although, as far as I know, it still is existent, unless I'm just being bad at life. Um, but typically, as far as I know, you can do comma, can place, colon, uh, that's a quote, not a colon, and then quote, Minecraft, colon, quartz, for example. Um, and I don't know if that's the game ID for this. Um, it's quartz underscore block, great. I am, I've, I've done it. <laughs> quartz underscore block. And... Let's see, if I go to adventure mode here, nope, apparently I'm wrong and that tag doesn't exist. Let me go ahead and get rid of that, entity, or that tag there, and we're going to move on to the next thing. Oh, duh, I messed it up. It's actually can't place on, so I don't need to cut that out because I just I just missed one word. Um, so there's this can't place on tag only for blocks. Let me go ahead and um, and place them only on certain things. So if I go to head, were to go ahead and, um, and get myself a pickaxe here, and a bit of normal stone. I could go ahead and demonstrate how all these could work together in say a map. So say for example, you could get the sacred piece of stone, but you had to get cobblestone out of it. So you could place this piece of stone down anywhere. You can't place normal stone down. Or actually it's survival mode, not adventure mode. Duh, I'm in the wrong game mode. You notice you can only place this down on the quartz box. You can't place it down on say the stained glass. You can't place it down here. You can only place it down on the stone or on the quartz. Normal stone and normal cobblestone can't be placed down. You can place it on normal stone. Now once you place it down, there's only one to break one to win way to break it, and that is using this golden pickaxe. And there we go. Super easy proof of concept if you wanted to go ahead and create something like that. So um, of course for blocks there are two specific tags that you can only use. Um, and these are can't or the two specific tags that are only usable in blocks, and those are can place on and block entity tag. Now actually um, I'm, that's a little bit of a lie saying that they're only using one blocks because can place on could also be used on hose and spawn eggs. Um, kind of interesting. Um, but block entity tag is used for tile entities um, if you want to go ahead and store certain tags on them. I'm not going to cover that right now though. Um, and this is not a super advanced tutorial, but I'm going to be covering everything because I don't want this video to be super long. Uh, a, for, my, for the sake of editing, and B, for the sake of just not wanting to do that. All right, so next we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how to get custom player skulls. Now, custom player skulls like this one here. And that reminds me, thank you to Shatter right here and Metanoir right here on Patreon for supporting me. Um, they both help me uh, fund my server and just run the channel. Um, so if you want to go ahead and help support me, go to patreon.com slash wavejump 
And uh, yeah. All right. So if I were to go ahead and want to give myself, say, um, a Shatter Skull, and Shatter's username is Shatter6, I would go give Jump Games Skull. Um, and then it's one, I want to say four. T I have to find the one that gives me a Steve head. Um, so it's not zero, it's not two, it's not one. Um, it is three. Okay, so we're going to do um, one, three, and then I'm going to go ahead and do, um, because we're, again, we're selecting specifically a, uh, a skull, uh, that it's a player skull. I'm going to go skull, owner, colon, and the player name. So I'm going to do shatter six. And you notice I have shatter six's head now. If I wanted to say get notch's head, um, I could type in notch instead. And there you go. Now I have notch's head, just like that. Um, so you could very easily get custom player heads that way. Uh, and that's why there's just helpful things to know so you don't have to go to a website every time you want to go ahead and summon in a custom player school. Um, these are all things, to be honest, I forget really quickly, but that are really helpful to know. So, that, so you should probably learn them because they're helpful. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Um, there are a bunch of other tags. Again, I will have a link in the description below to a post about all the different tags. Um, you know, you could use... Um, also, yeah, the, the post has things other than just item and block tags, but I'm only covering item and blocks tags. So um, I could say, for example, let's do one more tag. We're going to cover the... Hmm. This is, this is a bit tricky, you know? There's there's a lot of, of interesting stuff here. We're going to go ahead and do hide flags, though. Hide flags is a good one. So, say for example, I want to go ahead and hide the enchantments on an item. So we have this amazing stone right here, and it shows us the enchantments. Say for example, I didn't want people to see the enchantments. What I can do here is after all this can place on crap, or stuff, I mean, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and do, um, let's see, hide flags, colon, and you go ahead and add a bunch of different numbers. So one would be enchantments, two would be attribute modifiers, four would be unbreakable, whatever. It's kind of hard to remember exactly how to use it, and I um, actually think I need to do one. And what this will do is you notice it hit all the enchantments. Um, there's also a can place tag, and I can go ahead and hide that as well. Um, so go ahead and um, let's see, I said can place on. So I can do 1 plus 16. I'm going to get to myself. You notice the can, well, the can be placed on didn't disappear, and nor did the thing. So apparently I did that wrong. Um, <laughs> um, well, apparently I, um, oh, maybe I need to do 17. Maybe that's it. So let's try that. Maybe, maybe that's how I'm supposed to do it. Yep. That is how I'm supposed to do it. So 17, just go ahead and add the two numbers. So one would be enchantments, two would be attribute modifiers, four would be unbreakable, eight would be can destroy, 16 would be can place on, 32 would be other information such as potion effects and shield pattern info. All right, I'm going to end off this video now before I screw even more things up. Thank you for enjoy or for watching this video. If you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. I post command tutorials every single week on Wednesday um, at the same exact time. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye.